Eight years ago, I printed this. It's one of my favorite functional prints. It's a 3D printed vise that I use to hold circuit boards and solder. And this is actually a nice print. This was done on a CR10, the predecessor to the Ender 3 from Creality. And this is actually decent, but took 17 hours to print. And then four years later, I made this one, which has a longer handle, a faster gears, 12 hours. Well, here we are today, eight years after this 17 hour print, and I can print this whole thing in five hours or less on a Prusa Core 1. And this thing is just so beautifully printed. It looks really, really good. It's so much smoother when I turn it. It only took five hours. How did we get from 17 hours to five hours and eight years? Let's talk about it on today's Filament Friday. This video is sponsored by PCBWay. This is my original CR10 that printed that vise in 17 hours. And this thing still works. This was an original Creality 3D printer. I think I was only the fourth person to show this on YouTube at the time because it was so new. And this one is an early unit. It's got a 3D printed cover, which you didn't see in production. It has this acrylic, acrylic piece here. You didn't see that either. The only updates I've done is I replaced the fan here because the, the fan broke. And also I put a new extruder top. This is the EZR from Simi CNC. I recommended that many times for this type of machine. But other than that, it's stock, stock uh, glass bed, the stepper motors, all the electronics is in here other than the stepper motors. The power supply, the LCD, the circuit board, everything is separate from the machine and in this box. That's, that's the way they did it back then. And like I said, it still works. It's just slow. But the print quality I got out of this thing when I first got it, it was amazing. It was so much better than any of the other printers I had used before. This led to the Ender 3, which a lot of you have probably watched the channel because of what I showed you on the Ender 3. But I kind of miss these days a little bit, but I don't miss the slow print speeds, that's for sure. This is the vise I'm going to feature, and I printed it on my Prusa Core 1. But if you don't have a 3D printer, check out today's sponsor, PCBWay.com. They offer 3D printing services and you can just upload your file. You can see it in the 3D view to make sure everything looks right. Then go to their page, select your filament, and they'll give you a quote for one or more if you want quantity discounts. They also offer CNC machining, sheet metal fabrication, injection molding, and of course, low-cost circuit boards, which I use all the time. They've also got a mascot design contest going on right now. You can win up to $500 cash bonus. So if you're good at that, check out PCBWay.com. So in eight years, how did 3D printing go from 17 hours down to five hours? Early 3D printers were built from wood or laser cut acrylic. These printers were very fragile and not real stable. Soon, aluminum extrusions were used to build 3D printers. This made them stronger and could be built bigger. The Creality CR10 was a popular printer that used aluminum extrusions. I used it to build the 17 hour 3D printed vise. The Prusa MK series of bed slingers were also metal framed and competed with the low cost Ender 3 that evolved from the CR10. But all these printers ran from a single board with a single microcontroller that mostly ran the Marlin firmware. Silent TMC stepper drivers were added to make the motion control smoother. Better belts, bearings, and linear rails became popular upgrades. Those early machines also ran a Cartesian XYZ independent movement. This was replaced by Core XY motion systems and stiffer square frames. Probably the biggest advancement came from Clipper firmware. Clipper runs a motion planning strategy on a separate, more powerful CPU, like a Raspberry Pi or a Linux board. This allows it to calculate any complex acceleration curves and resonance tuning while offloading the simpler stepper motor drive control to the single microcontroller board. Clipper offered input shaping or resonance compensation that mathematically tries to cancel out vibrations to allow faster printing without the ringing or ghosting artifacts that were often found on faster 3D prints. Clipper could also handle pressure advance or linear advance to predict the filament flow better on corners or places where the 3D print 
needed flow to stop and go quickly. Hot ends improve with better thermal management, allowing filament to melt faster and flow smoother. Filament also improved. High-speed filaments were developed to melt better in these newer hot ends, thus allowing even higher speeds without sacrificing print quality. And slicing software evolved to take advantage of these improvements. Prusa Slicer was cloned by multiple printer manufacturers to take advantage of their innovations and improve the G-code file that the printers ran on. All these, plus many more features that I've probably missed, have advanced 3D printing from a 17-hour vise to a 5-hour vise with better quality features in less than 8 years. So it makes me wonder, how long will it take to see a 2-hour or less 3D printed vise? A lot of these innovations came from the open source community, and now we're seeing Calico firmware, which is a fork of Clipper that can do even more things. But most of what I've talked about has benefited single color prints. Multicolor printing is an area that has really grown in the last couple of years, but this is one area where speed improvement has gone the opposite direction. I mean, you could just change filaments in the middle of a print and get multicolor at certain layers, but to do multicolor at different layers mixed within the design, that was difficult until we got to the AMS type systems. And this takes a CHEP cube, which is single color, takes about 15 minutes to print on a high-speed printer, to four hours. And that's just like four colors. So the filament changing and purging not only wastes plastic, but takes a lot more time. And an area that maybe it'll improve is multi-head printers, like the Prusa XL. The Prusa XL has five different heads with five different colors or even five different materials. So it could be a multi-material machine. And if I print a multi-color CHEP cube on an XL, I can reduce that four hours of print time down to one hour. And whether that will speed up single color prints, I don't know, but it's definitely an area that we're gonna see improvement probably over the next couple of years. Now, some might question, why did I print another vise? Well, this one's for at home, my home lab in my basement. And you guys have seen that. That's where I've hung the hooks on the pegboard where I tried PLA versus PTG and tried to see how those would hold up holding my cabinets. So I wanted another vise for there because I'm doing some electronics there. And I have one here in my office. Now, I could have just used this, but this has become like a nostalgic piece. It's really, really slow to move, which is frustrating after you have the faster movement. But I almost don't want to touch it because this is where I started, you know? So I keep that one aside, and I just wanted another one for the home shop. Now, could I print this faster than five hours? Yeah. If I could have used a .6 nozzle in that, it would have been faster. There's other settings that I can put in the slicer to make it print even faster. So, yes, I can print a faster vise, but I want to compare you know, the 0.4 nozzle, 0.28 layer height here, 0.2 layer height for the threaded pieces. So it was two separate prints, but all, all together was five hours of printing. So I wanted to see how that would compare to this. And five hours to 17 is quite an improvement. So it just shows how far we've come with these newer printers. So I wonder, what do you guys think what it'll take to go from five hours down to two hours? How long will that take? What kind of innovations do you think we need? I'd love to know your thoughts. Let me know in the comments below. I want to give a big thank you to my Patreon supporters. Without all of you, this channel would not happen. So thank you so much. Thanks for watching. And here's a few other videos you might like. If you want to help support the channel, Patreon's the best way to do it. And if nothing else, click on that logo and subscribe. I'll see you next time right here at Chuck Hollibuck's Electronic Products and Filament Friday.